Before I dive into this video, uh, I just want to remind you we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. You want to stay up to date on all things Switch 2, Nintendo, and all that jazz. All you got to do is subscribe right here at the channel and help us on our journey. So we don't know when Switch 2 is going to be revealed, right? It could be this week. Maybe by the time you watch this video, it's already been revealed and all of our hopes and dreams have been realized and everything's amazing and awesome. But one thing I think is very clear about the Nintendo Switch 2 is heading into this next generation system, I've never been more confident in Nintendo's success than I am right now. And in order to be confident in Nintendo's success, you have to obviously look at reasons that we maybe weren't so confident in the past, but also talk about the rest of the industry on the whole and Nintendo's place in that industry that honestly leads to me being so confident that Nintendo's going to get it right this time. Now, in order for Nintendo to get it right, we look at all of the outside noise and we look at Nintendo possibly doing an iterative system here, which is what all the rumors and leaks are suggesting and maybe what the actual reveal even proves. And people worry, hey, you can't just have an iterative system. I've, I've seen the words out there as we've had all these rumors and leak videos go out there. People talking about how, hey, if this thing's just a bigger, you know, badder version of the current Switch, that's a bad thing. They need to, where, where's the innovation? Where, 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 where's the creativity? And the thing is, the innovation and creativity is still there. It's just coming in different ways. In fact, I would argue it's coming in better ways. See, this isn't the Nintendo of yesteryear. This is no longer Satura Iwata's Nintendo, which had a certain... Um, how, how, how do we put it? A certain personality. Uh, it took on the personality of the CEO. He was a very forward person. He was very much in front of us. Shintaro Furukawa, outside of financial briefings, we pretty much never see him. Sure, we'll see Tezuka. We'll see, uh, you know, Aonuma. We'll see Miyamoto. Uh, but we're not seeing Furukawa because he decided that the best way forward for Nintendo was not to be a personality first company, but rather a technology and gaming first company. Uh, this generation of Switch has lasted eight years. Uh, pretty crazy. Probably still has a couple years ahead of it, even after Switch 2 comes out. And it probably will become the best selling system of all time. If it's not the best selling system of all time, it'll probably be the second best, at least. I do think it passing DS is nothing but just a waiting game. But I, it's one of those situations where Nintendo has enjoyed the most successful generation they've ever had in company history, uh, profitability wise, sales wise. Uh, it's just been incredible. It, we're, we're heading into, you know, the. Uh, Oh, gosh, eighth holiday season of Nintendo Switch, and they still haven't lowered the price of the system because it's still selling millions of units every quarter. We're in year eight, and it's selling millions of units every quarter, even though Nintendo told us a successor system is coming. They publicly admitted a new platform is coming, and yet Switch continues to sell so well, Nintendo isn't dropping the price. I know that might upset some of you, but that's the truth. Uh, you'll see others all, upset out there that Nintendo is selling a game like Echoes of Wisdom for $60 when Breath of the Wild was $60. Shouldn't there be a price difference? And Nintendo says no, because we believe in the quality of our games. And the consumers seem to respond and keep buying in the tens of millions of units, agreeing with Nintendo that their quality is worth the price, even if the budget of the game might not have been so insane. And I bring up the game budgets because the state of the industry today is one where game budgets are getting out of control. All we got to do is look at recent reports that Concord cost $400 million over eight years to make only for Sony to close the doors after two weeks and not just close the doors, refund everyone who did buy the game because it was such a colossal industry flop and we're hearing more and more stories like this about games not being profitable or not as big of profits as they were intended to be how many times does square enix have to come up with another financial briefing where the ceo is saying hey we're not hitting our profit targets we're not hitting our sales targets with our games ubisoft obviously watching their stock just crash and crash after star wars outlaws and so many other games that have flopped for them at least flopped for them maybe not as hardcore as concord but flop for them in a way that d isn't sustainable for them as a company nintendo is different nintendo is leading if not pioneering if not always been 
a company that very much believes in itself, believes the best way to experience their games is on their hardware. And as much as we know that might not technically be true and that some games are indeed better on emulators on Steam Deck and PC, in the end, those games might not have been what they were if Nintendo wasn't so dedicated to making them as clean and as just, you know, amazing as they could be on one particular hardware. Believe it or not, it is easier to develop your games for one piece of hardware rather than three or four or infinite on PC. It just is easier. And because it's easier, Nintendo is free to use those limitations of the Switch to have some of the most creative and inventive games to date. We talk about Nintendo lacking creativity, lacking inventiveness. This is the generation of Switch where we got games like Nintendo Labo, this cardboard VR system that actually worked, or the AR in you know Mario Kart Home Circuit where you build your own Mario Kart courses. All of that happened this generation. Heck, we had arms, an arena fighting game with springs for your legs and arms and all this crazy stuff. We've had so much inventiveness from Nintendo this generation. We returned to true open world Zelda for the first time in forever and the first time in 3D games and we got two of them. We had the best selling 3D Mario ever and continue that creativity well changing up the power-up game with using the hat and being able to take over different beings in the world for the first time. Nintendo is keeping their creativeness, keeping their inventiveness, while being smart from a business perspective. Let's stop confusing consumers. Let's stop worrying about the personality-driven and charm of the old days, like when we used to have menu music and themes. And instead, let's just focus on what actually matters the games, because that's where their efforts belong. When we look at the Switch 2, it might indeed be a iterative, boring platform. You might not have themes. You might not have menu music. Maybe even the eShop isn't all it's cracked up to be, although we would love to see a massively improved eShop for many different reasons. But what it will be is a system that is simple to navigate and has games people want to play. And that's really what matters in the end, is it not? I've never been so confident and excited, of course, for the Switch 2 because Nintendo feels like they have a direction, an obvious direction, a direction some may disagree with, but clearly a majority understand. When children who are just getting into Nintendo's ecosystem go from their cell phones and tablets over to a Switch, it feels like a seamless transition. What, how do you load things on a phone? You just have icons, you tap them, it's not so crazy, there's not a lot of theming, maybe you have a picture in the background, but for the most part you turn your phone on, there's no music playing, you tap on your application and you go. You turn on a Switch, you tap on your game, and you just go. Sometimes you don't even have to install if it happens to be a physical game. Let's not get into the fact that Nintendo is keeping physical media alive and well. Maybe not perfect, but alive and well anyways, including the convenience of putting a cartridge in and just playing without installs. Something that has left the competitors in the market where they decided game installs are what's best for gaming, which makes sense when you're trying to take advantage of, you know, faster reads, read and write speeds, you know, than a disc can give you. Or you could just stick with a cartridge format, which just has faster read and write speeds than a disc anyways. More expensive? Sure. More convenient? Absolutely. Nintendo has a direction for once that doesn't seem as if it's reliant on a particular gimmick or a particular high of a certain type of thing. Nintendo has relied so much in the past of their successes to be about some big innovative thing they're doing that nobody else has been able to popularize. The motion controls and dual screen touch controls of the DS and Wii era felt so amazing and brought Nintendo to heights we didn't even imagine possible and we thought they could never get back to that again. And Switch has surpassed all of that by simply taking what people know and love about gaming and bringing it together. Home console handheld one system able to do it all it's not perfect it's not the most powerful system in the world you're not getting the best frame rates and even nintendo's own games don't get the best frame rates lately we've been playing through link's awakening in anticipation of echoes of wisdom and while i did a long live stream there were many times there that stream i noticed several frame rate hiccups with link's awakening that clearly wouldn't be there if there was more powerful hardware and you know what that's fair the critiques are deserved 
but so is the praise. Nintendo Switch 2 is poised to be, yes, a likely iterative platform that is very uninventive and doesn't add anything crazy to the mix like so many people are used to Nintendo doing, and that's because their current president is someone who reacts based on logic. He doesn't react in a we need a panic sort of way or we need to shock and surprise the audience. He's talked about how Nintendo has incredible highs and falls off a cliff. And oftentimes it's because Nintendo is stuck trying to chase that next high. The Wii and DS era were lightning in a bottle events that were perfect, just absolutely perfect for their time. But that was before smartphones. That was before motion controls were everywhere. By the time we got towards the end of those generations, the things that made those generations stand out so much were no longer standout features in the industry. They weren't sustainable ideas. But the Switch is. The Switch is something you can carry with you, something you can play at home, something you can put on your TV. Many people have argued we don't even need a Switch 2. Look at all the incredible games coming to Switch. And for that, that's just credit to Nintendo for continuing to support this system so late in its life, not abandoning it like it has so many other pieces of hardware. And you know why they're not doing that? Because the next system to come is likely to just be more of the same, just better, more able to have third-party games, more able for Nintendo to... Uh, add to you know their incredible library of growing IPs. Yeah, they're bringing old IPs back, by the way, but they're also inventing new ones along the way. And when we get to Switch 2, while it might seem like, man, what's the point of getting Switch 2 while you have Switch? Nintendo will show you why with their games. They're going to show you things beyond your wildest imagination. You thought Mario Kart peaked with Mario Kart 8? Maybe it did. Or maybe Nintendo has another trick up their sleeve. Because maybe the true creativity and inventiveness of Nintendo isn't these crazy out there hardware ideas or adding extra buttons or scroll wheels or doing crazy things and giving us different form factors. Maybe that's not what truly is the magic of Nintendo. Maybe the magic of Nintendo is about how they make you feel when you're playing that 3D Mario game at the launch of Switch 2. If you're one of the lucky you know, handful of millions that will have a Switch 2 at launch and be able to play that brand new 3D Mario game, that feeling you get, that smile, that, 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 that peak of joy that jumps in your heart, that's what makes Nintendo, Nintendo. And they're not the only people doing this. I was sitting down uh, working on our last podcast before it went live because it was a pretty big show. I don't know if you heard. It's the most watched podcast in channel history. Uh, and there was a lot of prep work that went into that. And Eric was sitting there playing an indie game called The Plucky Squire. Yes, available on Switch right now and all other platforms. And watching the pure joy on his face, here he is playing on a system he bought day one, March 3rd, 2017. This system's approaching eight years old. It feels dated. Games on it don't always look the best. And here Eric was in 2024, co-host of the podcast, playing an indie title that isn't the most graphically intense thing in Plucky Squire. And he was laughing. He was having fun. He was having what we call as gamers pure joy. And it was coming from the small little short indie game that just filled him with so much happiness inside. And that's what so many of us have felt for Nintendo over the years. But we always try to complicate it. We always think Nintendo needs to chase the next fad. They need to dive all into the VR. They need to go after the smartphone space and maybe create a Nintendo phone that's the best gaming phone ever because it has Nintendo exclusive games. Or they need to go all in on streaming and create a streaming stick. Or they need to go back and split up their divisions and go back to a traditional powerful box under your TV along with a companion handheld. There's so many things that people think Nintendo needs to do, but all they really need to do is keep doing what they're already doing. The reason Switch is still selling in the millions in year eight at 300, 350, 200, all the different versions, the reason it's still selling so damn well today is because the novelty hasn't worn off because the Switch isn't a novelty item. The Switch has become an essential gaming device. There's a reason handheld PCs are growing in popularity. There's a reason the PlayStation Portal did way better than people expected, even myself. There's a reason that there's talks of Sony and Microsoft launching handheld systems. There's a reason 
And that reason is because what Nintendo is doing isn't something that, you know, is, is a flash in the pan. This wasn't a crazy out there idea. It's traditional controls that combine everything Nintendo's done together in the one platform. And it's something people are not tired of. They're not tired of Switch. You don't hear people going around saying, damn, damn, you see this? This thing sucks. Who wants something like this? Who wants to game on something like this? We're not seeing that. All we're seeing is we want this. Just with enough power to make our games better. Sure, we want better controls. Sure, better, you know, rumble or whatever thing you're, you're thinking of, whatever matters to you. Sure, a better eShop, a better interface, better you know, way to organize things, a better NSO. I'm not saying Nintendo's perfect. I'm not saying there aren't things Nintendo could be doing that are better, and they may or may not do some of those things. But what I am saying is Nintendo Switch 2 is in a position, maybe the first time in Nintendo history, to be more successful than the current Switch. Because eight years ago, Switch felt like this foreign concept, this new a Wild West idea of combining home console and handheld together. Who would dare even try, attempt such a thing at a time when Nintendo was on the brink of losing it all? The Wii U and 3DS generation was not good. Not for Nintendo anyways. Now we sit here in 2024. The new system probably launching in 2025. And I'm so confident in what this system's going to do. How this system's going to rise from the ashes. What are those ashes? All of our impatience for Nintendo to reveal the damn thing. Guys, why do you think we're so excited for the reveal? Why do you think we're excited? Why do you think I'm excited? I'm excited for an iterative platform. And why is that? Because Nintendo is confident. They have direction. They know what they're doing, and they know they just need to give us more. And that, folks, is why I'm excited for the Nintendo Switch 2 and confident it's going to end up taking off in ways we've never seen a sequel system take off before. It's also partially why I think they're just going to call it Nintendo Switch 2, but that's neither here nor there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Give me your thoughts on where you think Nintendo is heading and if you think it's the right direction and if you are just as confident as I am in the comments below.